Okay, a game design challenge. If I show you this map, you can immediately identify the cold polar regions here. But can you also tell which areas are dry or where the ocean is really deep? Sure, you can check out 10 different statistical overlays, but it's super important that players have a good understanding of the world they are creating. And I really want to show this information in one go. So how do I summarize these overlays in one map and get players excited about all of the biomes available for them to fill with life? How do you procedurally divide an alien planet into regions? For those of you new here, this is evolution simulation game The Sapling, my solo indie game project. There are scenarios tasking you to design an ecosystem that meets specific requirements, but there's also a sandbox where you can build your own algae, plants and animals, turn on random mutations and see how they evolve. Let's start with ecological zones on land. The first intuition might be to just use well-known biomes on Earth, like rainforest, savanna, tundra, steppe. But there's a problem, because all of these names describe the life in these zones. But when you start with a new planet, there is no life yet. Perhaps the player will decide to not fill the tropical region with a forest, so who am I to already label this region rainforest? So, okay, let's only name the regions after the temperature then. By the way, under the hood, I use a temperature scale from 0 to 1 to make calculations easier. Only when it needs to be shown to players, this is translated into a scale from minus 50 to 50 degrees. So starting at zero, we have polar, then frostlands, a temperate region. No, wait, mountain peaks are also colder. They can even have snow, but naming it polar wouldn't make sense. If an area is colder and it has high elevation, let's name it montane instead. Okay, so temperate, let's continue to desert, the hottest place. But no, no, wait, where, where's tropical? In the sapling, the hottest region is around the equator, similar to a lot of real planets. I always pictured these as deserts in my mind, but I recently realized this is of course incorrect. Around the equator on Earth, we find not deserts, but tropical rainforests. It's so rainy there because this is where air heats up and rises, cools again and loses its water. I'm oversimplifying, but crudely, deserts are usually directly above or below tropical rainforests, because this is where the dry air that has just lost its water ends up. You can see the location of tropical rainforests on Earth on this map in blue, and Earth's deserts in red on this one. So far, moisture in the sapling only depended on distance to water, so the more inland, the drier the soil. In colder areas this is still the case, but I've now made it so that in warmer areas, the warmest places become extremely wet, and the areas around that become extremely dry. This also means it's now possible to have a really dry area directly next to the ocean, which I thought was weird. But it turns out you have coastal deserts in real life too. Anyway, so now we have warm areas that are really dry and really wet. Obviously, let's label the wet one tropical and the dry one desert. If you don't like this, for example because you want your desert somewhere else, I have now improved the statistics painting tools and also added them to the planet editor. Before, I naively implemented this painting tool to be relative to any existing statistics. For example, for temperature, you could set it to increase or decrease the temperature within the circle. This rarely gave the desired results, however, because, as I've learned, players nearly always have a really specific temperature in mind when they want to make a change to an area. So now, instead, you can pick the desired value and just paint over what might have been there before. Including statistics painting into the planet editor, which was not designed with this in mind at all, turned out to be way more complex than you might initially think. This is because so far, all statistics are calculated and interact with each other, as we've just discussed. So what happens when the player starts editing statistics? I guess the game should go into some sort of manual mode, where statistics are no longer automatically calculated. But how do we communicate this to the player without a big fat text box on screen? And how do I communicate that you can no longer tweak the sliders in this mode? Do I make them grayed out? Do I hide them? And how do players go back to calculated statistics again if they desire? I desperately tried various UI designs, some ugly, some unintuitive, when I finally stumbled upon a super simple and elegant solution. It works as follows. By default, when editing the terrain and you select a statistic, you see just one range slider for that statistic and it immediately updates the heat map. 
However, there's this one switch, and if you use it, you will see the editing circle appear on the map, and this same slider now has another function. It determines the value of the statistic you are painting. The option to increase or decrease the temperature of the world in one go is also still there, by the way, to cause ice ages or global warming. And as the importance of moisture has increased with every update, I have added buttons for moisture too. I frequently found myself abusing the seasons for similar effect, which is of course a good sign something needed to change there. Speaking about water, let's continue with labeling the climate zones of underwater areas. For these I started simple by using ocean depth as the main statistic. So we have an ocean zone, a deep ocean zone, a shallow ocean zone, but I quickly realized that looks wrong for lakes. My first attempt to define a lake, algorithmically that is, was to start from the side of the map and try to reach all other water tiles. The ones that couldn't be reached must be surrounded by land and thus a lake. That actually works for most cases, but it didn't feel right for me, because this means that as soon as a lake is connected to the ocean somehow, even if just by a tiny river, the game will consider it an ocean. I was stuck for weeks trying to solve this, but I think I have something pretty simple now. For the sake of lake detection, I just grow the land in all directions, closing narrow openings automatically. Basically, if a lake is still reachable even when water tiles next to land are no longer considered water tiles, the body of water is connected enough to the ocean to be considered ocean. If not, it's a lake, or if very shallow, wetlands. For the ocean too, I've added two new buttons to the sandbox panel, or to be more precise, I've split up regulating temperature on land and underwater. This is because, until now, the oceans were barely affected by the overall temperature, making it near impossible to make ocean life go extinct with a natural disaster. So these are all our climate zones. Polar, frostland, temperate, desert, tropical, montane, ocean, shallow ocean, deep ocean, lake, and wetlands. It's quite a lot, as you can see, so I've created a special legend that highlights which climates are actually present on the planet you designed. Still, I would say it's way easier to grasp than combining 10 overlays in your head. So at this point you might be thinking, yeah, this is nice and all, but why is it so important to label areas? It's not like this changes all the time. How is this related to the update? It's not like the land moves.